So today's the day Unity 2018.2 is released and it is packed with amazing new features. As always, I thought we could take a look at some of the most exciting new features and make sure this video is beginner friendly as well as it is suited for intermediate Unity users as well. If you guys want to see and learn more about Unity features, make sure to subscribe to the channel and give this video a thumbs up. Also, let us know in the comment section what feature are you looking forward to the most. I think mine is all of the upgrades to the HDRP which we are going to talk about, but let me know yours. Now without further ado, let's check out what Unity 2018.2 brings onto the table. Hey guys, Sam here. So as we all know, Unity 2018.1 marked the start of a new cycle with major upgrades. Features such as the scriptable rendering pipeline, or SRP as it's also called, shader graph, ECS, and everything else added made our lives a lot easier developing with Unity. And now, with 2018.2 being on the table, Unity built on these innovations and added several new features. Before getting into it, I just want to give a big shout out to Richard Stance, Cupola, Trombear MCP, and everyone else supporting us on Patreon. You guys are awesome. So first and foremost, let's begin by the basics. If you wish to download 2018.2 and experiment with all of the features, you can download Unity's latest official build through Unity Hub. And if you if you don't really have Unity Hub already, or if you're not familiar, don't worry, I got you covered. I'm basically going to leave a link to download the hub in the description box of this video. It's obviously for free as well. It's basically now used to store all kinds of Unity builds and your own projects in one single place instead of like separating them to into like 20 different directories. Now, getting into the main topic, one of the goals for Unity 2018.2 was to build on the SRPs in order to enable next level rendering. On the other hand, another focused area has been to develop a range of features and improvements that will help us creating projects that target the mobile platforms. And one of the biggest steps forward here is the fact that Shader Graph now supports both of the pipelines lightweight and high definition. This means you are no longer bound to just use one of the pipelines. Speaking of which, Unity has also started adding some new mobile optimizations to the lightweight render pipeline. So they are clearly now targeting the mobile platforms and ensuring that we have easier time to develop our projects. And there are also several new 2D features that are available as preview packages, including the brand new vector graphics importer and pixel perfect. The Vector Graphics Importer makes it easier for you to work with SVG Graphics or Scalable Vector Graphics as they're also called. Pixel Perfect makes it easier for you to achieve a perfect retro look across different resolutions on a wide range of devices. And don't worry, I know that this is a little fast forward, but we are going to spend more time talking about these individual features, so don't worry, that's coming up further in this video. Obviously, it's not stopping there. We have a bunch of new features to talk about, but they just require a little more, I would say, deep information given from my side. So since you guys are, you know, most of the big viewers here are beginners, so let's take a short break before we get into it get you guys used to the flow of this video and use this break to take a look inside of Unity's editor to see what's actually new when you open it up so you don't get confused. All right, so as you can see, we have now Unity 2018.2 open up here. It's the initial version for point two basically which got just released and the first thing that I want to focus here in in the sense of the UI updates basically is the fact that we obviously have the assets folder as per usual under our projects tab but then we also now have something called packages and this basically is a packages folder that contains all of the packages you install through the package manager which is where you can basically go to window package manager and here you can find all of the packages that are available available for Unity and the current version for Unity and you can also see if your version is not compatible and stuff like that and if you go like this is basically in projects so if you go to all you basically have everything here. The package manager is also something that got introduced in 2018.1 not point two, but it's still pretty raw and new so they're still experimenting and updating the UI a little bit and you can also see we actually saw like a little hint of this now that I opened up the window tab but if I open it up again you can see that we have 
fewer options here, but they're they're actually not removed. They're basically just now categorically filtered, like I said before. So basically, for instance, we have general where you can find scene, game, inspector, hierarchy, etc., etc. Basically, everything that you have open in the Unity editor right now and the ones that are most important pretty much. So, and then we also have rendering where you can find settings such as lighting, light explorer, where, which allows you to find every single light object in your scene, occlusion culling. You also have animation to basically pick any of the animation tools you wanna to use, like the animation timeline, the animator for creating mechanism animation, and also the animator parameter. And obviously we got a few more options here, such as sequencing, which includes timeline analysis, which has every single optimization performance sort of feature tool, something like that, such as the profiler, which is a fantastic tool. And obviously, once again, we have the package manager and we also have TextMesh Pro just for this project because the project is using that. One more feature that has been added to the UI or the core of the engine now is the fact that you can copy the path of a single asset or a single asset folder or whatever it might be inside of your assets folder basically. And you do that by basically going to something like, for instance, let's say we're gonna copy the art folder right here, the path to it. So what I do is I go to 2D game kit and then I right click on the art and then I can copy path or press and hold down alt control and then C, press C in order to copy the path of this. So instead of showing it to Explorer every single time, you can just copy the path and use it in your asset, like the code for referencing to the asset and stuff like that, which is super, super good. And if you didn't know, in the project manager, you can also now disable certain parts of Unity, such as like if I wanted to remove post-processing from my game, I can do so by clicking remove here and it's actually removing automatically. I thought that it was gonna ask like, are you sure you wanna do this? Because it's gonna like mess up the project now, <laughs> which is funny, but oh, it seems to be fine. So that's good. But yeah, and I, I feel like this is going to help with like making your project size a little smaller, significantly smaller, especially if you download something a little bit larger from the all tab here. One more thing I like about the project manager is the fact that you can also backdate something. So if you, for instance, say we were to upgrade the uh, the Text Mesh Pro, right? We upgrade it and we feel like it doesn't really work out that well. Our project or assets are not compatible, which it really wouldn't happen with the Text Mesh Pro, but it's just an example. Then you can basically just press on this button here, which states the version and you can pick a different version, like an earlier version, and update to that, which really is an update for this. Maybe they can fix the button to actually say like downgrade or something like that. But yeah, basically you can just like back update or <laughs> downgrade pretty much to a different version, which is super good. And that is pretty much all of the new stuff and new upgraded version of the UI that I found so far. If you find something else that I have missed in this video, let me know in the comments and actually let us know in the comments because we're obviously all working together on this. Alrighty, so that is how the new Unity editor looks like. I call it kinda new, but it's basically more crisp. The toolboxes at the top are like 10 times easier to browse because they are now categorically filtered instead of being all over the place. and. Obviously, if you feel like you need help with the new features or something in Unity's editor, you don't really understand, you have an error, whatever it might be, you should feel free to leave a comment on this video to receive help. And you can also join our live help and chat Discord server, which you will find a link in the description below. It's obviously free to join and get all the help in the community, so feel free to join right now. We're over like 6,200 like-minded people who are helping each other, so just join. Go ahead. So let us continue by taking a deeper look into the new features. First and foremost, we should talk about the optimizations made to the scriptable rendering pipelines. We are now introduced to something called SRP Batcher. This feature basically speeds up CPU without affecting the GPU performance. The SRP Batcher gives games that use PBR or physically based rendering as it's also called a major CPU boost and works with the high definition and the lightweight rendering pipelines. And we also have scriptable shader variant stripping, which helps us now reduce player build time and data size. Both of these factors often increase with the complexity of your project because obviously because of the increased number of shader variants, as most of you might already know. With this feature in the core though, you can manage the number of shader variants generated 
and therefore drastically reduce player build time and data size. This is also something that a lot of people have been asking for many, many years now in order to have a little bit more control and a wide set of options to play around with when it comes to player build size. So that's awesome. There's also a bunch of exciting new improvements made to the HDRP or the High Definition Rendering Pipeline. It's now known as the High Quality Graphics Template for Unity and it's now getting a big buff as well. So let's go through them real quick. First, we have Volumetric Fog, which receives lighting from all support light types except for area lights. It is also possible to control the density of the fog locally with density volume. We also now get glossy reflection support to the planar reflections in Unity. This basically means that the reflections now takes into account the smoothness of the material. There are also other improvements made to the HDRP, which I'm going to link in the description in order to make sure that this video doesn't A, become way too long, and B, to make sure I don't really over talk this. Another big improvement I want to have a word on is the shader graph. As I mentioned earlier, shader graph was introduced in 2018.1 and lets us now build shaders visually instead of coding them basically, which is a good thing for me because I'm so bad at shader coding. I'm a programmer myself, but I've just always been been intimidated of coding shaders. I don't know what it is, but maybe the visual tool will be helpful for me. However, Shader Graph only allowed us to use it within lightweight RP, but now that changes. So 2018.2 now allows the Shader Graph to support the HDRP and as well as the lightweight, obviously. You can also now edit the reference name for a property in a node, making it far easier for you to reference your shader properties from a script. Speaking of which, I'm going to start making some tutorials for the Shader Graph tool. So let me know your ideas in the comment section down below on what kind of effects you would like me to create and make tutorials on. Before ending the video, let's also take a deeper look at 2D features introduced in Unity. First, we have a brand new feature called Pixel Perfect. This package is in preview with this build of Unity and it will help you get perfect and crisp pixels regardless of the screen size by making all of the calculations automatically for you. So you don't really have to do anything manually, it just automatically calculates everything for you. One huge improvement this adds is the fact that your sprites will now benefit from this feature even when they are in motion or rotating, meaning that it eliminates all those harsh outlines and edges off of your sprites. You'll also get to build hexagonal tile maps now with Unity 2018.2. These are super useful for making strategy games or digital board games. The last feature I'm going to cover fully is the new SVG importer. This feature lets you import scalable vector graphics, which basically means SVG, directly into your projects. The SVG importer allows you to create sprites assets with a very small file size that will retain their quality at any resolution. In order to use this importer, you basically just literally import your SVG files into Unity just like any other asset and it's doing it automatically for you. I actually honestly thought that it was going to be like a super complex tool that was going to be in the Windows section of Unity, but apparently it's just built into the core of the engine now. The importer supports the most common features of the SVG 1.1 specifications, such as the gradients, fills, clipping paths, and dashed lines, and rounded corners. The sprites imported in this manner are all supported by the Unity 2D tools, which is good because that means you can use it with like tile maps and all that kind of stuff. You can now get the SVG importer through the package manager in Unity, just like the Pixel Perfect feature itself. And that is pretty much everything I thought we should make obvious for new people and intermediate developers in Unity. Other things such as Unity Hub, which is being released with its first initial version soon, which I'm super hyped about, standard asset replacement and recorder are all listed in the blog post, which I have linked in the description. Oh, and also let me know in the comment section what you think of recorder. It's basically like a tool that you can use to manage and record animation clips, videos, and image sequences from the editor itself, like right within the editor. I'm personally looking forward to it and I really wanna try it on the channel and see how it helps. Like for speed level designs, it might actually be a crazy tool to use. And I want to hear what you think about it. And with that being said, thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed your time and wanna see more videos like this, hit the subscribe button below this video to stay up to tune as a first step and give this video a thumbs up to show some support because it really determines me or determines kind of like what kind of videos you enjoy the most seeing. So if this gets a lot of likes, obviously a lot of people are liking to watch this kind of stuff. So I'm going to make more of them. Now just watch people saying like, Psycho, you just want likes. I don't. 
but I still do, okay? <laughs> Anyways, so I'm looking forward to see your comments on this video and perhaps even meet you in our Discord server. Enjoy your night, guys. Peace out. Bye.